This is Seoul in South Korea, and it is one of the most advanced cities in the world. And this is me, one of the most advanced human beings on planet Earth. Yep, humans are finished. Now you're probably wondering how a person like me ended up somewhere like this. Well, it all started with a dream. A dream of robots, AI, all things sci-fi, and quite a bit of Padme from Star Wars. But unfortunately for me, none of my friends shared this dream. So I decided to be the most spontaneous version of myself and book a trip to the place where my dreams are a reality. <laughs> Now they say that South Korea is the robot capital of the world, and I was immediately made aware of that in the first place I set foot, the airport. Photo service, can I take a picture? You can take pictures with me. <laughs> She's even making a little tune. <laughs> this is so weird. Now South Korea in fact has the world's highest robot density in manufacturing industries. So this encounter was to be my first of many with an Android. I'm leaving her there. She's counting down. It sounds like she's gonna explode. But an exploding robot was the last of my worries as I've received news that could jeopardize my entire trip. Your bag is not loaded on this display. They left my luggage in India, which has everything in it. So, what am I gonna do? You know, I don't even know where I am right now. I'm outside the airport. I can't read any of the signs. Some of the signs are in English. I can't even read them. Despite a less than ideal start to my trip, I was soon encountering the first example of subtle modernity in this city. The roads here have green flashing lights on the floor because people are always looking at their phones. Look at that, it looks very fancy. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't get that in the UK. Just a couple of potholes, kids getting run over by mopeds. Oh, it just went red. Wow, <laughs> truly the pinnacle of technology. Having made it across the road without being flattened like a pancake, I relied on Google Translate and got into a taxi. Now, whilst there was nothing futuristic about this car in particular, Seoul recently revealed their drone taxis, which the government planned to introduce as soon as 2025 in a bid to help solve congestion. This isn't just your standard hotel, of course. This is South Korea, so this is a robot hotel. That's Alexa, and that's Rob. And of course, for no particular reason, there are dinosaurs in the hotel lobby. Is a dude. <laughs> He's not speaking English, so that's a slight issue. What do I actually do here? Please call the staff using a phone on the left of the lobby. Uh, I just wanted to check in early. Oh, hello. AI and robots, it's all cool, but at the end of the day, you really need that human touch to check into a hotel. You let me down, son. And this is my room. Not bad. Why have one bed when you can have two beds? Double the comfort. The toilet here has like a gazillion features. Apparently one of them puts water on your bum. This will be my first time ever. I'm really nervous. Whoa! Ooh, that's a very weird feeling. It's also not stopping. At least I'm gonna have a really clean bum. <laughs> has this ever happened to you? Stranded in a foreign country with no luggage and dehydrated. Well, Aerope offers a solution to at least one of those problems. A futuristic bottle that can make plain water taste like watermelon. But how is that possible? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, you just need to fill up your Aerope bottle with water. Next up, you want to take your scent pod and place it on top just like this. But don't stop there. You've got to pull up your scent pod until it naturally stops to activate it. And then you're ready to get hydrated. And long gone are the days of strenuous water ball lifting. Ugh. With air up, you just hold upright and sip away. These scent pods may look small, but don't be fooled. Each pod can last for five liters of water. That lasts even my whole trip. So what are you waiting for? Get the bottle of the future now by heading over to the link in the description. Okay, I was told that if I order something on the room service, it'll be delivered by like a little robot. So I'm just waiting. <gasps> I think it's here. I think. Oh, that was so scary. Oh, whoa. <gasps> Hello, my friend. He's wearing a tuxedo. Thank you very much, my friend. I ordered some toilet roll. Well, now what? Did you just sit here for a while, or? You did a good job. Your services are no longer needed. Thank you. He knows how to open an elevator. Honestly, my faith in robots, completely restored. However, it was time to wave off my new friend. Goodbye, Muffin. So, obviously, I have no luggage. The only things that I actually have right now are everything that I'm wearing, this camera, and this adapter, which is for the wrong country. 
so you know what time it is. It's time to go shopping! So I went to the shops. They actually have a 7-Eleven here. I grabbed the essentials and then gobbled up Pikachu's balls. Oh, that's quite good. Before heading out once again to claim my Namane card, which is South Korea's equivalent to an Oyster card. I get to design my own card. This is what I'm going for. This is what I'll be using to get around on South Korea's underground system. And it is an apple with the most stupendous Steve's. Just look at it. I'm going to name him Dave. So I descended into the subterranean metropolis that is the Seoul subway system, the most extensive in the world. But Dave fell at the first hurdle, and I found myself relying on human help once again. Thank you. Now I gotta figure out which train to get on. I think we're on the right one. So here in South Korea, they have free Wi-Fi literally everywhere on a train, and you don't even need the Wi-Fi because the 5G works. Look at that. I'm not gonna lie, the subway system here is easily the best I've ever been on. It's clean because you can't eat or drink on there. They've got TV screens on there advertising like burgers, chicken, and it's huge as well. Like 10 million people are riding this thing a day. There's 619 stations, and I think around 19 different lines. There's a Harry Lewis joke in here somewhere. Dave did not let me down on the exit, and for the first time since I had arrived, I was starting to feel like a local. Oh, there's a set of piano stairs. This is amazing. It looked so weird, but it was so good. Composing that magnificent masterpiece had led to quite the first, and so I headed to quench it at a cafe called Bot Bot Bot, famous for its service robots. Little cocktail robot. Gone for the lime mojito, of course. Restaurants need to pay less than £500 per month for a serving robot, which is actually cheaper than hiring a human waiter. But is it as good? Okay, oh, yeah, get the last bits out, fella. He's like probably thinking I'm such a weirdo. Got a coffee and a cocktail at 9 p.m. The coffee tastes good, but the coffee was made by a human. Cocktail, on the other hand, oh, I've got great faith in this. It was made by a superior species. It's fantastic. With a sneaking suspicion that the robots were trying to get me drunk in aid of their inevitable <laughs> uprising, I drank up. Like the puny human that I am. Okay, so the nicest thing just happened to me. The two ladies working at the coffee shop just gave me this. I think it's like a quiche. They said it's for me. I don't know why it's for me, but that was really nice. With my gifted quiche in hand, I rode the subway back to the hotel, where I pondered whether I would have been gifted this beautiful egg-based snack if the cafe was run completely by robots. Look at it! That looks amazing. I don't like quiche. But that's not the point. I'm not gonna lie, the vending machine game over here is crazy. I managed to get a travel charger, you know, the, the actual right one this time, and just about resisted the urge to purchase some vending machine steak. It's time to sleep. Alexa, Rob, it's been a pleasure. So I made my way over to my next hotel, which was actually ran by I humans this time, but with a futuristic design. Whoa, the curtains open as I come in. This room is crazy! What a beautiful hotel room. And then there's me. You can poo whilst looking at other people. That has always been a dream of mine, and I thank you, Sol, for being able to make that dream come true. I just about managed to catch breakfast, and I prepared for my second day in Seoul. Now, there's one thing about this city is it actually has some of the fastest, like, internet in the world. Like, just take a look at that. That's faster than my mum's Wi-Fi at home. And trust me, I know, she's always complaining about desperate housewives buffering. And so am I. And so I headed to Seoul's shopping district to find, uh, you know, some clothes that didn't exactly smell like Calfrizi's mother. Oh, we hit the jackpot right there, ladies and gentlemen. I love it here. The vibes are great. Everyone's happy. The sun's out. Everyone looks really cool as well. I actually feel like such a loser. And it's no wonder I feel that way. South Korea's cultural fascination with their appearance combined with advanced technology has led to South Korea being the leading country in plastic surgery, with many receiving it as a graduation gift. But I think I'll just stick to my chicken. Bone apple teeth. After finally acquiring some clean clothes, I decided to freshen up back at the hotel. And then of course I went about my business on another exceptional loop and had a great time in the bath. A little de-stress is what I need. I feel like I haven't really spoken to anyone. I haven't had the chance to make any friends. Obviously, that wasn't going to happen with me sat moping in the bath. So I put on some less stinky clothes, feeling like a million bucks, and got back out there. Oh, I'm a bit too old for them old kicks, eh? Let's go. It was time to take Sol's buses for a spin, 
which once again showed off some pretty snazzy tech. Look, I won't lie, the bus stop is fancy. It looks good, you got screens everywhere. You can even check your temperature if you fancy. It's actually really warm in there as well. Maybe they got central heating. There we go, the world's most mind-blowing bus stop. I think I'm where I'm meant to be. So they actually don't have Google Maps here. Google Maps doesn't work. So you've got to use this other app called Naver Map, and it is extremely difficult. Even when I change the language to English, it's still all Korean. I took a brief walk to the Dong Daemun Design Plaza, which is famous for its neo-futuristic design. You know, I could probably design something like that myself. But kudos, you know, they did a good job. They really did. And I stumbled across this really talented pianist. She's going crazy on her mind, I'm gonna lie. I really wouldn't normally walk down an alley like this in the middle of the night in London. Here, safe as, uh, safe as what? What's safe? Chocolate fireman isn't safe, so I shouldn't say that. But of course, this sense of safety comes at a price. Heavy surveillance is prevalent throughout Seoul, and smart CCTV that utilizes AI analytics is becoming more common. I then found myself on a farm controlled by AI that was just slap bang, like in the middle of a subway station. I'm sure there's a reason. I'm just not sure exactly what the reason is right now before striking absolute gold. It's a boss man chicken shop made by robots, and it's called Robert Chicken. And by gold, I mean golden brown succulent fried chicken, of course. World's longest water fountain bridge, apparently. I'll be honest, it's the only fountain bridge I've ever seen. This place is crazy. There's so many people here. Everyone's just kind of brought blankets. This is all extremely romantic, except I'm here on my own. The longer I sit here, the more sad I feel. I've got no one to spend this glorious moment with. I'm really hungry right now, thinking, oh, I'll get a bite to eat, I'll get a little bit of food. But it's really hard to choose when you don't know what anything says. I seem to have found myself in like a little Korean barbecue spot. I think I've ordered pork. There's actually a little barbecue going on right in the middle of my table. I've no idea what I'm doing. This is food poisoning waiting to happen. I'm just saying. There's one thing about Sal that I've noticed, and that is everyone's kind of just on their phones like, Non-stop. Yesterday I was on the underground and like every single person was looking down. Just straight at the phone. It just feels a little bit like everyone's disconnected, you know? I mean, why listen to me? I'm... I kind of cook pork. Can you get a little go? Oh, look hot. This is actually so good. Oh, okay, yeah, I burned that. I carried on setting miniature fires until it was time to head home. I got into bed and indulged in the very thing that landed me here. My time in Seoul was coming to an end, and I, you know, I won't lie, I was feeling a little bit lonely, a little bit isolated, so in a bid to connect to the culture a bit more, I opted for a day less centered around technology, and so I headed to stay in a traditional hanok for the night. You know what time it is, traditional hanok house tour time. Boom, kitchen. You've got this quaint dining area, wholesome bedroom. This is where I'm gonna eat my noodles. Bathroom, no shoes in the house, but they do give you these nifty little slippers. Down there, that's a dangerous place. First of all, it's extremely steep and you can barely get through this gap. Like, what? Well, hello there. Look, I know it's a traditional house, but they still actually love their technology here because they've got a bloody projector on the wall. But if I'm gonna be staying away from technology for today, I probably shouldn't use this. I couldn't help myself. All jokes aside, I took a long walk into the city. You know, where I saw the changing of the guards at Gyeongbokgung Palace, visited one of the historic fortress wall gates. You won't get that in Clapham. Before getting completely lost trying to find a scenic view of the sunset. That just looks like a dead end, doesn't it? I've only gone and found the place I wanted to be, but it's dark. I am a sad, sad man. Seoul is genuinely, genuinely a beautiful sea. What's better, me, <laughs> me or the view, am I right? <laughs> you got two views. <laughs> no, okay. The sunset was long gone as I headed back into the city, checking out a couple local markets and uh, purchasing some traditional cultural headwear. I've become the final boss of Taurus. Look at my little home for the night. It's just like really cute. Time for some ramen. Is this how you make them? This is a better idea. That is looking pretty good to me. Dinner time, and I've made my own dinner. When I say made it, I pour boiling water on it. It is so good. Just me, 
my noodles, and a lot of loneliness. I kind of thought I'd make like a couple of friends here. I think I sold myself a bad dream, but it's okay. I've had fun. It said that South Korea actually has one of the larger percentages of lonely people in their country, which is sad because it's a beautiful place, but you want to experience that beautiful place with your friends, you know? Now I might miss the sunset, but I sure as hell ain't missing no sunrise. If you get knocked back down in life, just get back up the next morning, 5 a.m. Oh, I've forgotten which way it was. You can't see it. You cannot see the sunrise. It just looks like 3 p.m. on a Tuesday. Are those two dogs? They're wild dogs. Wow, back up, boys. Back up. You know, I may have missed the sunrise, but on my way back to the house, I stumbled across a fortune telling dispenser, which gave me some words of wisdom. I got a little thing, I got a little hammer. Oh, one time. Let's see what they got cooking for us. It's all in Korean. Okay, I translate it. It does say it's a difficult time to get married because we haven't reached a relationship yet. Wow. Oh, the missus is not going to be happy with that one. And with that in mind, I enjoyed my last moments in an incredible city. By the way, it's 7 a.m. and I'm having spicy noodles. I need to be institutionalized. Seoul was a beautiful city, and whilst the technological innovations I've seen in my time here are breathtaking, the cultural side of Seoul and the serenity of the place is what moved me more. Technology aids us in our everyday lives and is a valuable asset to societies at large. Our futures are likely to be more reliant on artificial intelligence and automation, but what ties us together on an individual basis is culture. After all, what's progress without what came before? Subscribe.